Counting your calories and macros can be a difficult and tedious task for a lot of you, but now thanks to AI, things just got a whole lot easier. If you've ever wanted to start tracking your food intake to reach a fitness goal, or maybe you've already started, but you often just get frustrated and annoyed with it, then you're gonna love this video. So I'm gonna break down exactly how you can use an AI software called ChatGPT to help you count your calories and macros by simply taking a photo of your meals with your smartphone. My name is Cooper Page. I'm a men's online health and fitness coach, and I've helped dozens of high-performing men shred body fat, build lean muscle, and get into the best shape of their lives using my data-driven Helix protocol. I've been counting my own calories and macros for the last 10 years off and on. And I'm going to show you how things just got a whole lot easier. So I'm going to be using a web-based software called ChatGPT. If you're not familiar, ChatGPT is an AI-powered advanced conversational assistant designed to provide accurate information. It can assist with tasks, offer creative support, solve problems, and deliver personalized responses. By the way, that description was written by ChatGPT. So anyways, all you need is to grab your smartphone, okay? So what you're gonna do is head over to your browser and you're gonna go ahead and type in chatgpt.com. I'm already logged in, I already have the app, but all you can do is create a free account. You can also download the app if you're gonna be using this frequently, okay? So pretty simple, not gonna walk you through the setup there. Go ahead and pause this video if you need to set it up. I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the ChatGPT app just for an example sake, okay? Once you're in here, you should just be at a blank prompt right here with a little text bar and then a few icons to the left. So literally all you do is if you have the food right in front of you, you can go ahead and press on the camera button and then you can go ahead and take a photo of the food. I do not have the food right in front of me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus button and then on the little photo library button. If you're on the web version on your phone, you're just gonna click on the little attachment button and then you're gonna click on photo library and then upload. Okay, so from here, then all you need to do literally is give me the macronutrient and calorie breakdown of this meal. That's all you do. Type it in. If it's a meal like this that is very basic, like I just have a very clear photo of salmon, asparagus, and rice, so I can just type that in. Don't need to give it any extra context on this. And then boom, it just go ahead and starts by analyzing the photo, estimating the serving sizes, and then breaking down the calories and macronutrients for each element or each ingredient on the plate. And then if you go all the way down, boom. There you go. Total estimate for this meal, 592 calories, 45 grams of protein, 22 grams of fat, and 49 grams of carbohydrates. So you might be asking, okay, well, what do I do now? Well, if you are tracking macros in something like MyFitnessPal, I'll go ahead and show you how to uh, transfer that and enter that over. If you're just you know, keeping track in your head or writing it down on a piece of paper, like old school, whatever, like that's cool too. I guess you can do that. Okay, so today we're in my fitness pal. If we just look, we have a blank day here. Let's say we're entering this in for lunch. I'm going to go to the lunch section and click add food. And on this top bar, I'm going to go over to my foods and then I'm going to click on create a food. And then from here, I'm just going to type in homemade for the brand name, description, salmon meal. You can call it whatever you want. You can say salmon, rice, asparagus. I'm going to just put one plate for the serving size and then one for the servings per container. Click on the next arrow. And then calories, I know it was 592, I believe it was 22 grams of fat, 49 grams of carbohydrates, let's just double check, 49 grams of carbs, 22 grams of fat, yep, and then 45 grams of protein. So then you're just going to go down to protein, type in 45, click on the check mark in the top right, I click on no thanks, boom, there you have it. All you had to do was take a photo of the meal ask it to give you the breakdown, and then enter in the details that it gave you into MyFitnessPal or however you're tracking, whether it's an app or something else. So that is how you do it in a super basic sense. Now, I do want to give you a little bit more of a pro tip. So if you go in here, I'm going to show another. Um, let me go ahead and find this other one here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you if the meal is not as straightforward as the salmon meal, for example, you're going to want to do something like this. So if you look at this photo, this is a plate that actually has three different types of meat and then a salad. So all you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to give chat GPT a little bit more context. Okay. So as you see, I said, this plate 
This is a plate with three different types of meat. There's tri-tip on the right side, pork in the middle, and chicken on the left side, and also a serving of salad. The reason is different types of meats, different types of foods are obviously going to have different calories and macronutrient breakdown. So if you do have a meal that's a little bit more complex, there's a little bit more going on, it's not super straightforward, just give ChatGPT a little bit more context and you'll be in a really good spot. It's going to go ahead and estimate the serving size. But if you're at a restaurant, for example, and there's a steak that you order and it tells you the serving size is six ounces of sirloin or 12 ounces of a ribeye, go ahead and give ChatGPT that context. That's going to help it be a lot more accurate and ultimately give you a much better and closer reading to what you're actually eating. Uh, same thing that you can same thing that you can do if you're at home and you've already weighed out some of your ingredients. You can just go ahead and give ChatGPT a little bit more context on what's going on if you want a more accurate measurement. Um, keep in mind here, if I scroll down here, I'm going to so, show. So I started eating this taco, super basic, I know. But normally tacos have like cheese and sour cream and things like that. So what I did is I said, this is a carne asado uh, taco with just meat and onions and a flour tortilla. Give me the total calories and macros. So I went ahead and gave it a little bit of context. And then this other taco that I have, normally these tacos have cheese and things like that that you can't necessarily see from a photo. So I went ahead and give it the context here. I said, this is a birria taco with no cheese on a corn tortilla. So I wanted to give the context that there was no cheese because if there are meals that typically have cheese or rice or granola or something that's going to add a lot of calories and carbs and fats to the meal, but maybe a simple photo doesn't illuminate all of the ingredients. It doesn't show what's in there. You're going to want to just give that extra context. That is how you do it. Super simple. So whether you're at home, whether you're at grandma's Christmas dinner, or you're at a restaurant, there is now no excuse to not count your calories and macros because it is literally just as simple as taking a photo of it with your smartphone plugging it into ChatGPT, and boom, it's going to handle everything for you. So it's amazing, and it's actually surprisingly accurate. I've taken the exact same meal, and I've tracked it meticulously on my own, and then I've taken a photo, uploaded it to ChatGPT, and we're talking about splitting hairs. The difference in the estimation that it gives you is really, really small, almost not noticeable. And again, guys, when it comes to your fitness goals, tracking calories, tracking macros, especially if you're a beginner, it's not about being perfect. It's just about making progress. So even if you're not 100% accurate, this is still miles and miles ahead of everybody else, and it's still way better than doing nothing at all. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe. Check out the links below if you want to learn more about what it looks like to work with me. If you're a high-performing man that wants to get into the best shape of his life, perform better in his work in all areas, see those links down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Peace out.